Let's start over again. I do think that it's okay. it's fine. It's fine. capitalism it's my fault. is inherently anti-vegan. A couple months ago, I did a Q&A, and one of the questions was... Uh, that's a very, very hot start to this video. Hi, YouTube. You're now watching me react to this. Uh, we messed up the intro really bad, so we're starting up again. Here we go. Let's find out if anti-capitalism is actually anti-vegan. About my political ideology, and I was asked if I considered myself neoliberal, and I said, yeah, I would consider myself neoliberal. And then I kind of gave a little bit As more detail, expanded on that a bit in a follow-up Q&A. Hey, thank you for the $5. Really appreciate that. The, the comments on the first one, people were kind of mad at me. It ranged from people confusing neoliberalism and libertarianism. They're not... Okay, that's very hard to confuse neoliberalism and libertarianism, seeing as how neoliberal neoliberalism is uh, internationally focused, laissez-faire, free market capitalism with some social progressive values. Um, I don't know how you'd confuse that with libertarianism, but all right. Same thing to kind of like you're dead to me type comments for not opposing capitalism, even equating it. That does suck. I will agree. There are some people who go way fucking over over bored i get that all the time uh all all sympathy for insane people commenting really really violent shit on your uh youtube channel that shit sucks to fascism even saying that it was inconsistent with veganism so i wanted to address it the um kind of extreme anti-capitalist sentiment and how that relates to veganism shouldn't be controversial for those who don't know neoliberal is like your typical left-leaning social progressive but also being generally pro free market with few restrictions on a lot of industries like housing, but also very pro welfare state as liberty. That is not entirely accurate. Uh, traditionally, the the neoliberals, the actual people who define neoliberalism, aka Ronald Reagan and and Margaret Thatcher, who are basically the uh, the iconic like the poster child neoliberals those people were not in favor of a, of a welfare state the the welfare state is is not a part of general generally neoliberal ideology at all now i do recognize that there are some people who are very generous with the definition of neoliberal but a, a strong welfare state has never been like a staple of neoliberalism at all yeah they're the er neolibs yeah milton friedman exactly would say. Neoliberals want a substantial safety net, often even supporting public options like healthcare, for instance. Not all neoliberals do. Of course, there's going to be disagreement when the, the private options aren't serving the public. Conservatives often- This kind of, what this feels like so far, and I know we're only a minute and a half in, but what this feels like is like, it feels like she is very attached to the term neoliberal and wants to kind of define it to be what she is versus actually understanding what neoliberalism is. Yeah. What's the difference between neoliberalism and libertarians? Okay, well, there's a big difference between neoliberals and libertarians in the way they go about things. Uh, libertarian, okay, this is really complicated. We will talk about that as we go on. We'll talk about that as we go on. Right now is not the time for that discussion, but yes. Accuse neoliberals of being socialists because they accuse everyone of being socialists. <laughs> And to lefties, neoliberals are just conservatives. Well, yeah, because neoliberals tend very conservative. They do tend conservative, especially economically. That's one of the big things. Neoliberals and lefties clash. There is a massive overlap between neoliberals and American libertarians. Yes, American libertarians, yes, there is some overlap there. Um, but libertarians, to their credit... Uh, libertarians do tend to be more of like the small business types. They tend to be like, yeah, go out and start your own business. Whereas neolibs are like, go get a job at Microsoft. That's like a good way of envisioning the difference between an American uh, libertarian and an, and an American neolib. An American neolib is like, wouldn't it be great if you got a great job at Google? And then a, oh, oh hey, Grime Dango, great to see you. Um, and then... Uh, a American libertarian is like, you should go start a mint. Have you ever thought about starting a mint? 
you know a mint you know you could press your own coins all you got to do is buy the raw gold and then you could press your own coins it's, it's fantastic that's an american li uh libertarian and an american neolib is like hey honey let me get you help you get your applications out come on yes queen let's get those applications out to google let's get those applications out to oracle guess what i had a job working overseas for oracle i worked i helped them uh um, I helped negotiate a contract between two warlords in Africa and we, 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 we helped fund one of them so they killed the other one and then gave us a favorable contract on cell phone towers. Isn't that great, honey? That's an American neolib. An American libertarian is the, the, gold, the, uh, the gold press thing. See, I told you there is a difference. Um, you know, advocating for higher taxation welfare but ultimately the wealth in society that funds that welfare is generated by capitalist mechanisms same as the case in you know what people call european socialism which isn't really socialism by definition still relies on profit I mean, correct yep that's correct she did say she did get that correct motive still has private ownership even if a few select industries are publicly owned since socialism is commonly defined as like a transitional state to communism communism being the goal i'm going to Talk about focus on depends on the viewpoint, here. but fair enough. So why are neoliberals generally pro free market and anti communism? Is the question I want to answer. Philosophy hmm. is essential. A perfect vector for economic or literal imperialism. Generally, I blame capitalism, but I don't know if neoliberalism is specifically to blame. Um, neoliberalism has brought about the most vicious modern uh, imperialism and i don't know i think it's hard to say i think that's really hard to say yeah that's hard to say adam flores that's pretty tough to answer that one sure when it comes to ethics but you can't just like think really hard to figure out empirical facts right like when it comes to economics and economic policies and which actually work in practice what? which result in a functioning system that promotes a gdp that's conducive to human well-being you can think up an ethical Okay, but you do realize that the GDP does not measure human well-being, like, at all, right? Like, uh, that, that's a big, that's a huge, that's a huge problem in your argument right away. The GDP is not tied to human well-being. What? We, even libs recognize that. Maybe system in which it is wrong for one person to ever profit off the work of another person. You can call that exploitation, but in order to put that into practice, you have to just not care about the consequences. No, that isn't true at all. What? That is such a massive leap. Holy shit. In order, in order to, in order to call like stealing the excess value of labor exploitation you have to not think about outcome at all what that doesn't even make sense what? that's just sidestepping it completely at all you would have to ignore all of the times communism has been tried and all of the times it has failed which is every time every single time it's iphone vuvuzuela what do you mean define failure is cuba a failed state I'm sorry. I don't like listen, not to not to go all tanky mama for a second. Not to go all tanky mama, but I think it's pretty unfair to say that Cuba has failed when Cuba has weathered a complete blockade from the primary trade epicenter of the world and still has better health care for its average people. They have no homelessness. They have no illiteracy oops Ooh. yikes rojava yeah what the fuck this is so stupid this right here is this is ideology speaking there's no argument here this is just ideology pure ideology schniff schniff pure ideology and tried it has failed it has caused immeasurable suffering and death i'm a
Okay. Well, I would. Uh, I'm going to watch the rest of the video, but that argument right there is so bad. It's so bad and so propagandistic. I struggle to understand how she's going to come back. But all right. What is harm? Consequentialist. I care about consequences in terms of suffering. Most people care more about having a job, helping their family than they do about some abstract principle that says it's wrong for their bosses to make a profit off of their labor. And I care more about what people want than I do deciding what people want for them or, or what I think is better for them based on some sort of cosmic justice. No, that's just normal justice. If you do something and you make something, if the workers make something and your boss then takes that thing, makes all of the value and more and only gives you an hourly wage, not the full value of your labor, and they're just an appointed position that gets to do that, functionally, it's a tax. Your boss taxes you and all of your coworkers come together and work in the factory and your boss, the owner, might never even step in that factory, yet might make money off of the thing that you built. That's not cosmic justice. That's just normal justice. That's act like, this isn't cosmic injustice. This is normal injustice. Justice is when the CEO has three BMWs and your kid dies from malnutrition, apparently. I don't fucking know. This is the, this is the weakest shit I've ever heard. This is so weak ideologically uh, ideological poisoning injustice in and of itself is not harm it's only harm when the consequences of injustice actually harm people what hold on let me let me try and put this together oh hey griff griff astronaut or griff astronaut giraffe astronaut i got it i got it giraffe astronaut in Let's just replay this. I'm sorry. I need to re I need to hear this again because this sounds like some mental pre pretzel shit. Cosmic justice. Injustice in and of itself is not harm. It's only injustice in and of itself is not harm. What? That depends on how you define justice. Usually it, usually an injustice is defined as when something wrong is done to you. Maybe she means inequity? All right, let's give it a try. This doesn't make any sense. ...harm when the consequences word of injustice actually harm people. Injustice is only harm when injustice does harm. That is like tautological. Is this not a tautology? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. This is like so fucking difficult to get through or sentient beings. And that harm can range from material harm, disease, lead in your water being shot, to immaterial harm, like damaged self-esteem. There may be some level of inevitable harm there when we're talking about capitalism, I'm sure there is, but that only matters if there is an alternative that is better, that- Oh my God, unironic, this is unironic capitalist realism. Like absolute, unbelievable capitalist realism poisoning nothing else i don't believe i have concluded like her argument is i have concluded that nothing else works therefore there's nothing better than capitalism but no actual evidence to back that up just an assertion that nothing else does work literally capitalist realism if the harm that capitalism causes is worse than some sort of evidence-based alternative, but there is no evidence-based alternative or there is one. Yes, there is. You already brought it up in your own video. We already know that European social democracy is better than American capitalism, AKA it's better than neoliberalism. We already know that co-op models, that co-op businesses are more stable than traditional business models. Like, what the fuck? This is just ideology poisoning. This is like, this is like rubbing, rubbing two conflicting ideas before t t together and all of the electricity being discharged into like a giant ideology, uh, uh, ideology sink that just sucks up all the ex extra cognitive dissonance.
Yeah, yeah, f 500 trillion iPhones Vuvuzela, I know. But the, the evidence goes in the uh, opposite direction. Talking about ending capitalism because of the inevitable- Nope, the, just the end of the video. Like, just the end of the argument. Didn't just said, oh, the, uh, the, the evidence goes in the other way. No, uh, no evidence actually presented. Just gonna tell you that it does. Just gonna assert that it does. Arms without some solution without something that actually works better is like talking about ending food because food on some level is inevitably harmful no that is not that is not an argument that is phenomenally idiotic <sighs> oh no i can't believe it. i didn't think this was this stupid i didn't think it was going to be this stupid Compa what did you join to stream on? You just, oh my God, you just joined into me getting my brain melted by a lib. We're getting, we're doing like anti-lib stuff today, apparently. Holy fuck. I'm actually getting so mad. We ending food? What do you mean? How is that even comparable at all? That's just an absurd comparison. You've entered hell. True. Oh, first the Avenger, the Avengers thing was painful. True, but True, you crap, know, crap. maybe dying is worse. Regulated capitalism with a strong safety net is the best system we have based on the systems we actually have evidence on. Which Citation needed. Which is to say probably quite a bit more welfare than we currently have in the US. It's unreasonable to advocate for hypothetical alternatives when they range from untested to repeated failures. Again, you can't just reason out the ideal economic system for humans or- Wait, it's also really funny too. Something else that, that's really shocking here, um, something that's really shocking about this is assuming that all communist countries are the same, that Russia and China fall, and Vietnam and Cuba and, and uh, fucking, uh, Spain and 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 Italy and all uh, like all these countries that have had different communist and uh different communist uh e experiments done are the same they all have the same structure not that they're complete they I I'm not saying they are tech debt what I'm saying is that these were completely different models completely and utterly different models just you know in her mind no it's all the same it's all the same yeah also, again, they love to ignore co countries that are doing perfectly fine right now. For a particular country without evidence in practice. That's Have not fun, being guy. rational. It's not being scientifically minded. It's being dogmatic. This okay. is actually hilarious. This is actually hilarious to me. Imagine talking down to people in a video about being scientifically minded and not even citing any of your evidence, just literally asserting that everything that you believe is is fact. That's about as dogmatic as you can get. This is about as dogmatic as you could possibly get. Being rational, it's not being scientifically minded, it's being dogmatic. That's what you're doing right now. Not all use is abuse. The same goes for exploitation, which refers to unfair use. Some vegans say you can't be vegan unless hey, thank you, you cakes. are socialist or, or communist, but there's nothing in the term or the definition that is anti-capitalist. Veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products de derived wholly or partly from animals. Uh, last I checked, humans are animals, and therefore abolishing exploitation and cruelty towards animals includes abolishing exploitation and cruelty of animals for food, clothing, and any other purpose. Literally, you are arguing in favor of a system that is built definitionally on exploiting people for commodities. The commodity form is literally, definitionally, exploitation of animals for commodities. What are you talking about? This is incoherent. So the argument is something like veganism means no exploitation. Exploitation is capitalism. Therefore, veganism means no capitalism. Two very big problems with this. First, you have to accept the very specific 
Marxist definition of exploitation slash capitalism, which is essentially- No, you don't. There are many ways of thinking about labor in which, oh my God. Oh God, oh God, here we go. In the question, when you define anti-exploitation as requiring Marxism because you've defined capitalism as inherently exploitative. I don't see any reason to accept this definition, the, the Marxist definition of exploitation. I think it's much better defined as un- I love it, again. She talks about dogma and yet immediately uses a dogmatic excuse. I don't have an argument for why the Marxist definition of labor isn't good, but I'm just not going to use it. Let's replay that again for those who missed it. Here we go. Let's try that again. Let's take as a listen. As you define capitalism as inherently exploitative. I don't see any reason to accept this definition, the, the Marxist definition of exploitation. I think it's much better defined as unfair use, and what exactly that means is a lot more complex. Is there sometimes or even- I don't like it, therefore I'm going to throw it out. Even often exploitation in capitalistic systems of course. There are unambiguous cases, like obvious cases of exploitation, like wage theft and broken contracts. The same with animal- Wage theft is the number one form of theft in the United States of America. Wage theft is the number one form of theft in the United States of America. Did you know that? Should I say it again? Wage theft is the number one form of ex- of- of- and that- and again, wage theft happens in a system that's already exploitative, even more exploitation piled on top of the already existing exploitation. Number two is police seize property. True. Well, agriculture, no choice is given to the animal, obviously. And obviously it's impossible for there to be any sort of fair exchanged or any any sort of deal made. No, so, don't yeah, let it change pretty, your, no, no, joyless pretty... llama, joyless llama. Please don't let dumb shit vegans convince you to not go vegan. Going vegan or vegetarian is a good decision. It's a good thing to do. Don't listen to moron vegans because there are a fuckload of absolutely fucking dumb shit vegans who don't know shit about anything. 10% vegan is better than 0% vegan. Exactly. It's about fixing the problem, not virtue signaling and sounding like a moronic, a snooty, snarky dumb shit. Don't let dumb vegans convince you away from veganism. I promise you. Veganism is the morally correct position. Unfortunately, there are a lot of stupid morons. Snoot, snooty snark? Is that her name? Snoot snark? It should be. This is the most like Harry Potter liberal bullshit I've ever seen. Technically no tech debt, but that is a tech's a technicality and not the actual um, thing. Anyway, what if you don't have the capital or time or vegan? We'll talk about that after. Let's get back to the video. We'll talk about that after. I will literally save your question and we'll talk about it after. Ready? The unambiguous exploitation. There's also a strong case to be made for exploitation in the breakdown of regulatory systems, like monopolies, but that doesn't mean we can't understand how to evaluate fair exchanges. Wow, just like smoothing right over monopolies, huh? Uh, you know, monopolies happen, which leads to, you know, entire, in, entire countries being crushed under the thumb of a single company that can literally buy an army. But, you know, that, you know, it's fine. It's fine. We just don't, let's just not think about that part of it. Yes. Do we have a long way to go in creating a fairer market via regulation? Certainly. Arguably, we still struggle with monopolies. Do you remember when she said, do you remember at the beginning of the video when she argued that capitalism is the only successful form of economy and now she's saying that it's not successful at all and we haven't actually achieved the things we want to do? Hmm. Hmm. Almost seems like what is a successful system is completely arbitrary and used to justify whatever you feel like. Hmm. Monopolies. But that doesn't mean communism is the answer. Which brings me to the second problem. There is no evidence for a practicable alternative. The reason we can say animal agriculture is wrong is because we have well-established alternatives. We know- What? What? What do you mean? No, that is not how it works. Are you saying that, that, 
Oh my God. Are you saying that you couldn't make an anti argue an argument against slavery because you didn't have a, a, a South that didn't have slavery to compare it to? This is the stoop. This is the stupidest argument yet. Oh my God. This might be the dumbest one yet. At least, at least previously, at least previously her arguments had the, the spine to just say, I find other arguments inconvenient and therefore no. This is like one head. This is like neg this is like one half head. Oh, humanity can survive on a plant-based diet. We can grow plants. We can grow only plants. We can feed the world's population and we can do it without animal products. We just need a shift in the market. One product instead of another. Ah, yes. My favorite. Ooh, I love this conversation. Oh, this is my favorite part of the vegan of the vegan market poisoning. It's the keys. It's it's when corporations dangle keys in front of uh in front of uh, a, a vegan's face and they go ooh oh yes you can save the world with a brand new flavor of of Ben and Jerry's vegan ice cream, and then you ignore the fact that Ben and Jerry's is fucking owned by another corporation that does that smushing animals for fun in the side. It's oh my god, it's so stupid. Oh shiny new Fanta, yeah, it's so dumb. You you. Oh. Do people realize, do people real like this is one thing that vegans don't realize. There the for every vegan who starts buying vegan only products, there are 10 people born who are going to be raised in a in a family that will eat meat for their entire lives because meat is subsidized by the government. It's literally mathematically not going to happen. You're not, it's, you're never going to win with a market solution. You can't buy your way out of the meat industry that is choking America. Well, Rosie Specs, I don't know. I think some people can live entirely without meat, but I do understand there are some dietary limitations. You got to get out of that obnoxious vegan mindset. It hurts you more than anything. Listen, it's perfectly fine to be in. I, ar I literally argue in favor of vegan ethics. I think it's good to minimize harm to animals in any way that you can. However, a market solution for veganism is so short-sighted so as to be hilarious. Yeah, that happens sometimes too, Adam Flores. Yeah, there is some questionable uh, questionable legalization. But again, those are mostly technicalities. Collective vegan action can definitely have effects. Yes, I agree. I've talked I've I've talked about this. And we're going to we're going to talk about that afterwards, but let's finish the video first, okay? Market market solution veganism is literally idiotic and it doesn't work on a mathematical level. You are, pe vegans like this completely underestimate how many Americans live below the poverty line and will never be able to choose vegan products, ever. There will never be vegan products that are subsidized to the same degree, unless something really changes on a massive political level, but you're not going to get there by buying your way out of the meat industry. You can't. It's impossible. It's literally, it's impossible. You can't buy your way out of the meat industry. They have more money than you, and they will for the next 10,000 years. They have so, the, the owners of Tyson have so much money, you and all of your children's children's children will be dead before they even have to think about ever running out of money. If there were evidence that veganism had the same catastrophic consequences that communism does, like we couldn't grow plants without manure, or we didn't know how to make B12, then we couldn't say animal agriculture is wrong. We couldn't advocate for its abolition because- Yes, you could. What are you talking about? I, this has got to be, like, this has got to be one of the worst, like, I, I actually think, holy fuck, holy fucking shit. This is worse than, than right-wingers. This is- Worse than a lot of right-wingers in the argument. And I don't mean that morally worse. I don't think this person is morally worse. You're right. It's going to take till next week. I got to stop. But this is so... This isn't an argument. That's not an argument. Oh, God. Oh, it hurts. Even Tim Pool has better constructed arguments than this. We would have no viable alternative. 
unless or until like clean meat were a thing. Morality is a product of choice. When it comes to dietary habits and food production, we have a choice and we need to start- Morality is a product of choice? Making Don't do right it, Kaboka. Choice. When it comes to economics, the claim that we have a viable choice in communism just is not true. None of this means that we shouldn't research economic theory and, and try to find something better. I, I, I am familiar with, I didn't know by, it na by its name, but I did know there were meat packing companies that have more money than entire countries. Yes, I did know that. I have somniostatic. Yeah, it's really funny. A lot of this type of vegan, they think that buying vegan products is basically like buying um, indulgences from the Catholic Church in like medieval Catholic Church or in medieval, medieval uh, Catholic Europe. One of the top comments. Oh, oh. <sighs> yeah, true. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I get it now. Or just like in the hypothetical can't be vegan world, hopefully we would research how to make B12, how to farm without manure. What it does mean is that it's wrong to advocate for abolishing capital. Wait, why would it be wrong? Wait, why would it be bad? Why would it be bad to farm with manure? That's not, that's not, like, that doesn't harm animals, right? To gather their manure? Whatever. ...based on some hypothetical work and basically a leap of faith. I'm not the vegan police. I don't like to tell people they're not vegan or fake vegan or anything like that. That said... I do think that anti-capitalist sentiment is inherently anti-vegan, at least currently. It this is the take we were waiting for. Let's hear the argument. Let's hear the argument. If we also mean the human animal, when we talk about animals and the definition of veganism, and, you know, clearly anti-capitalists do, otherwise human economics would be irrelevant, then cruelty to humans is not vegan. Trying to push an entire society into, at best, an unknown situation, putting countless livelihoods and lives at risk within that society based on personal ideological reasons. You mean like you have done for this entire video? You mean like you have done for this entire video? Holy, oh my God, no, okay. Gotta let That's it play, cool. gotta let it play. The desire to tear down, for no credible reason, any and all capitalistic systems without regard for the human suffering that has always <laughs> inevitable. Wait, really just black book of communism. Straight up, just back black book of communism. Oh my God, Venezuela! I didn't think it was gonna get this bad. Gorillion dead. Inevitably resulted is cruel. I know the- Okay, listen. Of all things, so you no, know, this whole video has been intellectually offensive. But using pictures of of like scary events in Russia as like an argument, without realizing that there have literally been decades of debate over various aspects of uh, it's so bad, it's so bad. This is so bad. Tint is not cruelty. And what I'm have you stumbled into? You've stumbled into. Tint doesn't matter. It does when we're talking about you know someone's personal character. But look. When we're talking about animal agriculture, the intent isn't cruelty there either. The intent is to produce a product and to make money. It's the outcome which is harmful and the indifference to the outcome. Which... I'm lost. I don't remember where we were in this argument when that person came in. Which is cruel. I don't think intent is any excuse in the face of overwhelming evidence of harm and ideological blindness to that harm is no excuse. And going well, back- Wouldn't that be the same for capitalism though? Isn't that exactly the same for capitalism? So how does that even, how does that support your argument? Oh no. Back to the second part of the definition of veganism, by extension promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. So no part of veganism as a moral choice makes any sense outside of a standard 
economic model of supply and demand. Without cap- What? That is incredibly limited. Oh no! When you tie your veganism specifically to capitalism, you can't be a vegan unless you're a capitalist. Oh, this is worse than is anti-capitalism anti-vegan because at least under that take, you could say that the current anti-capitalist movement is simply anti-vegan, but she's literally saying capitalism is required for veganism. Oof, that's sad. This is the worst vegan ever. Oh my God. Capitalism, eating plant-based is just symbolic, you know, promoting um, personal consumer actions and boycotts and alternatives as morally meaningful makes no sense. The presumption of a capitalistic context, a capitalistic society, is part of the definition oh, of veganism. Oh God, oh no, oh God. She was so close. Holy shit. Wait, just listen to this again and then I'll explain why. Hold on, just listen to this again. Oh no. Symbolic, you know, promoting um, personal consumer actions and boycotts and alternatives as morally meaningful makes no sense. The She's literally arguing, she's literally recognizing that boycotting meat industry and buying vegan, vegan products has no intrinsic meaning if it doesn't affect the market. And then she just concludes, well, it must affect the market because otherwise they won't be meaningful. Oh no, oh God, this is, oh God, oh no, it's re backwards reasoning. Oh, literally backward reasoning. Oh no, fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Presumption of a capitalistic context, a capitalistic society is part of the definition of veganism. A denial of capitalism or opting out of capitalism in principle, not only does this make vegan ethics irrelevant, it fails to do good in the most cogent way that veganism acts on the world by changing production. It's a failure. Veganism doesn't change production. It doesn't address production. Oh no. Oh, oh God, oh God. Is the argument that being vegan in a no, non-capitalist society would be too easy? It sounds like an argument for being anti-capitalist if you're vegan. I don't think, I don't even think that makes sense. Like, like I, I don't think that's even her argument, Pinkwick. I don't even know if she thought about it that deeply. Holy shit. Like, I'm going to try and listen to this again. Oh, I can't even, I can't even, I can't do it again. Let's just keep going. It's a failure to be vegan in any sense from ethical principle to consequence. So again, I'm not going to call vegans who happen to be anti-capitalist not vegans, but the ideology of anti-capitalism seems inherently at odds with veganism, at least for now. I don't have any political ideology. I'm not, you know... I have no political ideology. How you know someone has a political ideology is when they tell you they don't have a po political ideology. That is the, the surest way of being sure. That is the clearest way of being sure that someone has a really deep political ideology is they tell you that they don't have a political ideology. Oh my God. Fervently pro-capitalism. I'm not committed to that. I'm not even committed to neoliberal. It's just kind of the closest descriptor to what I currently believe in terms of politics. I think the only the only um, kind of label I fervently Say defend another super for myself would yeah. be consequentialist. But I am definitely anti-anti-capitalism and communism. There is no evidence for it being anything other than... So you have a political ideology is what you're saying. You're saying that you, you, you're you definitely, definitely anti-capitalist. I mean, anti-anti-capitalist. Kristen Walshop has a couple good videos on the planned economies of Walmart and Amazon and how they could be used for people could be. instead of profits. It's a little hard to do that, but I've, I've actually, I've seen, fuck, I've seen a video about that. I can't remember what it was, Ugh. but thank you very much. Thank you very much for the super chat there. Really, really appreciate that, uh, Jason. Really appreciate that a lot. They call themselves a consequentialist. Ugh. And a horrible dangerous political theory when put into practice thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it Hopefully when you that... w the the communism understander has come on has logged on 
communism understander. All right. Okay. So, well, there's a whole bunch of self promo here. W what is she hawking? Like vegan products? Yep. Vegan books and supplements and food. Oh, boy. What's this? My favorite Lush product ever. <gasps> oh, God. No, no. Oh, God. No. It's just, it's literally the last quarter of the video is all shilling. By the way, if you've liked what you've seen today, press the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. And you should also consider coming to my Discord. The Discord, mwah, awesome as fuck. Come on in. We have a lot of fun on the Discord. The Discord is right here. Discord.gg forward slash Demon Mama. It's amazing. And we'd love to have you. And you'll also know when I'm going live. So that's really cool as hell. It's super cool. Super cool. Anti All right. Video number two, controversial thoughts on cheating from the uh, cringe vegan. Let's find out. Just don't tweet ever. Sometimes I think, no, this is fine. This is okay. It's controversial, but it's fine. It's never fine. Sex is a physiological need and women who don't have sex with their husbands really shouldn't be surprised when they end up cheating. I still stand by that, but there, there are ca caveats. Sex is a physiological need, and women who don't have sex with their husbands really shouldn't be surprised when they end up cheating. This is PragerU's argument. This is PragerU's argument. This is PragerU argument. No joke. We applaud women who leave or even cheat on men who don't satisfy them sexually, but the reverse is not true. Do people do that? I have never, ever heard of a woman being praised for cheating on men. Ever. I have never heard of that. What? We expect men to grin and bear little to no sex for years and shame them as deviants and selfish if they give in. Why don't they leave? It's not so easy. Not having sex doesn't mean there isn't some immense love there. And sharing a home, kids, and grandkids? If we aren't going to have sex with our spouses, maybe we should, one, divorce, or two, let them fulfill their needs elsewhere? You can do number two without cheating. You can live number two without cheating. Yeah, you're supposed to be able to communicate. Oh, my God. Here we go. All right, let's do this. I still stand by that, but there there are oh, ca boy. caveats, and I I shouldn't have tweeted if I was going to talk about it. I should have made a nuanced video, but instead I tweeted. We applaud women who leave or even cheat on men okay, who don't tired. satisfy them sexually, but the reverse okay. is not true. We expect men to grin and bear little to no sex for oh, years and shame them as okay. deviants and I selfish if they give in. Why don't they leave? It's not so easy. Not having sex doesn't mean there isn't still immense love there and sharing a home and kids and grandkids. <laughs> if we aren't going to have sex with our spouses, maybe we should one, divorce, or two, let them fulfill their needs elsewhere. So again, I stand by all of that. I will say, I said we applaud women who leave or even cheat on men who don't satisfy them sexually, but the reverse is not true. Again, there's some nuance there. I have seen, because a lot of people are like, what, when do we applaud women cheating on men? I have seen on Twitter, which Twitter is not real life, of course, like not even close, but I have seen in the more like- I have a feeling this is the type of person who does think that Twitter is real life, even if she says she doesn't, sorry. Kind of fakey feminist uh, crazy kind of sphere you know the ones who are like yeah men are all bad right where it's like oh yeah you go girl you know i think if you've been on twitter long enough you've probably seen it but again twitter is not real life that is not representative of the norm as someone else said the whole you know cheating slut thing is is way more pervasive in our cu culture and i think that's absolutely true so I should not have said that. I should have just left it at we expect men no to grin idea. and bear. Was there little... Sockdam, if you have a link to that, maybe we could look at it. Little to no sex for years, and then we see them as deviants, as yes, morally bankrupt, as selfish when they end up cheating. Oh, I also, didn't I clarify? Wait a minute. This is a problem too. I often end up tweeting controversial shit, like right before I have to go and do something else. I just finished recording a video. <laughs> so like right before I went to record, I was like, I'm just gonna tweet this. Oh, I said, to be clear, I don't think cheating is right, just that I understand it and that expecting a man or a woman to remain in a sexless relationship is pretty cruel, honestly. Again, stand by that 100%. I guess I should say, why am I making this video? I'm just making this kind of off the cuff video to um, explain a little bit more. Often I will tweet things and then just be like, yeah. Why do people like this even give a shit about marriage? Why would someone like this ever get married? Why? Why bother getting married? Like, what the fuck? Oh my God, it's so stupid. 
it's just oh no her st oh we'll have to go over her twitter after this oh god am i gonna oh no <sighs> yeah stupid government things oh jesus christ oh fuck that wasn't the right spot i put this note in the wrong spot that's not oh god oh boy let's continue it's controversial and people don't agree eh, whatever i don't care <laughs> not gonna make a video about it it's too much work which it usually would be which is why i'm just kind of i agree, right I agree. Now. like it i made a video fun. i made a tweet i did is it. it okay to not want to be in a sexless relationship yes of course it is but leave them or have a conversation a meaningful conversation okay i'll take a look we'll take a look at that afterwards Okay, we'll take a look at that afterwards. Maybe that's something to continue talking about this. I think it's important to talk about these kinds of things. These are like the sort of social issues that I think are important. Don't cheat. Yeah. Tweet. We should all return I to monkey. I tweeted that True. I thought women who talk Sometimes about just that. constantly. But not always. You know, being Most afraid never, to leave their actually. house because they were afraid of being like assaulted by a man, sexually assaulted by a man that I, I feel for them, but it's really irrational and we shouldn't be encouraging that type of thinking because it doesn't make sense what um you're very 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 unlikely if you live in the u.s to walk out of your house and be sexually assaulted and i got a lot of responses talking about well really people were talking about other sexual assault situations which was kind of proving my <laughs> my point domestic situations which is usually how people are sexually assaulted they're not walking on the street they're assaulted by a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend um, Okay, so the feeling I'm getting from unnatural vegan is just that genuinely stupid. Just genuinely stupid. What you got for me here, sarcomatose? Uh-oh. Wait a minute. You gave the follow. No! Anyway. Um, or a husband or no, someone Sark. else they know. The same with kids you know the same with kids and sexual assault it's usually someone they know but okay. i just didn't say all that it's like yeah whatever people can believe what they want to believe i don't know sometimes i get yes that kind this of is the same person you'll attitude we just did the veganism one. i usually like pointing out when people are wrong so <laughs> i'm just getting old and lazy maybe but yeah. yep yeah i wanted to make this video just yep. to clarify Okay, moving on. Another thing, a, a lot of the comments were just like, well, it, cheating is wrong. We should expect people to go to, th to therapy. And I think that's true. I mean, it, it depends on the context, but I don't think it's always an issue of therapy. It can often be very, very simple. You have a woman or a man, but look, it's usually a woman who is no longer interested in sex, does not want to have sex. And you know what? Maybe that's fine. There might not be anything wrong with that person often when women get older and men too but more often for women you do lose a sex drive and like that's okay if she if that doesn't bother her that's okay but then you have a husband who has not lost a sex drive and still wants to have sex these aren't like mental health issues this isn't yes it is yes it can be that is a, that can be a mental health issue yes it can be absolutely they absolutely can be something that talking it out is going to fix other than saying hey i have this issue and it's really making me unhappy what do we do about it and unfortunately not a lot of women are going to say oh okay i respect that and i i understand that this is an issue for you and yeah you should be able to fulfill that need actually i think more women would be uh open to that than you'd think I, I don't know. I think this video, I think we know the answer to that blue. It's for her. This video is for her. That's who it is. This video is for her. This is her vlog. This is her internet journal. And all of us have to be subjected to whatever her stupid thoughts are. No, most of us are going to say, oh, well, <laughs> sucks to be you, man. And it may not even be, you know, maybe the person who doesn't want sex is still like, okay, yeah, we'll still have sex. But maybe it's not so enjoyable for the other partner because they know their partner's not into it. They want to have sex with someone who's into it, maybe. Again, I, I don't think this is necessarily an issue that therapy is going to solve. I think the issue is pretty clear. This person wants sex and they're not getting sex. How, how are you going to fix that? Oh, my God. Hats. 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 Ah, the hats. Oh, God. 
Masturbation is not going to fix that. Toys, not going to fix that. Which is why I ended with, you know, I think there are ultimately I'm sorry. two, I guess I will, three I will cool my Divorce, auntie hat. Let I will your cool partner my auntie hat. I'm fulfill sorry. their needs elsewhere or <sighs> the partner decides to just grin and bear it. The other thing I wish I had talked about and why I, I do think, you know, my initial comment that. Yeah, exactly. They, they can, they can. Um, they shouldn't be surprised. The The reason I really say that is because it's kind of stupid. And again, that's not, I don't think that's fair. I'll get to that in a minute. But my initial feeling is- Why say it? This is a prepared video. Why say it? Oh, why? Why would you say something that you immediately retract? I think we should take a moment to recognize the traditionalist conservative part of the ideology that keeps people monogamous, even if other paths would be best for them. But we should be more open to talking about that and push that discussion first and foremost, not say, okay, well, cheating is okay. We did that, though. I had a really long, uh, what I think was a really good conversation about being poly just the other day, and I'm sure we'll have it again in the future. Um, uh, but I don't know. These people dominate the air airspace. These people dominate the airspace. This person has a quarter of a million subs and I only have 4,000, okay? That's just, I, I, nothing I can do about that, okay? But it's, it's kind of, it's confusing to me because on the one hand, you know, men are pigs and they're sexually driven and everything's about sex. What? Oh, wow, that was a quick, what the fuck? That was a quick, hold on, did I miss something? In a minute but my initial feeling is that it's it's kind of it's confusing to me because on the one hand you know men are pigs and they're sexually driven and everything's about sex but also we expect them to just not have sex and just that's they're not gonna cheat <laughs> but i don't think that's quite fair because it's not like we don't have a culture that encourages this idea that there's one perfect person for you and when you find that perfect person and marry that perfect first person you're never gonna look at anyone else again right he won't look to anyone else because he's just gonna want you so maybe maybe that's why women are able to hold these two views simultaneously like the yeah i just This is just, like, this feels so, oh, like, this feels so unhealthy. Like, this feels so unhealthy. Is this what, I guess this is how, I, I guess this is how most people approach the world, right? I guess. I guess this is how a lot of people approach the world. Because... Like, I mean, this is what it, this fucking reminds me of, like, of, of, uh, Christianity, but this person doesn't seem like a Christian. I guess it's just infected everything, right? I guess that shows you how far weird American anti-sex hyper monogamy. This is how normies think. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. No, I hope not. But don't they think this way because of people like this? Isn't this, doesn't this perpetuate it? Oh my God. I need, I need to, I'm, oh, oh. I need to succeed. Listen, everyone, I'm sorry. I know this is incredibly egotistical, but holy fucking God, I need to be able to get up to this many subs so that I can tell people something even mildly better than this. Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking God. Oh, Jesus. Anyway. Uh, when men are super sexually driven, but he married me and I'm his one special, special person. So it's fine. It's fine if we don't have sex because he loves me so much, right? Which is why I almost appreciate the more Christian view of that more because oh. at least for the most part, they're like, well, no. yeah, you have those needs. You're always going to have those desires. No, oh God, no, please, no. <laughs> those devilish desires, you know, the devil tempting you to look at other women and to, you know, try and get with other women and you have to fight it, which still sucks, but at least it's, at least it's acknowledging that you have those desires, right? I talked about this some more in the polyamory video too, just more about cheating. Cheating isn't always, I'm unhappy with this person. This person did a polyamory video? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to do it. Or I'm I just sorry. don't care. I'm gonna cheat. Like sometimes it's really... You do love the rabbit this person, hole begins. but you have this. Strap in, everybody. It's, it's we got shit to do. For people to 
not give in to. The vibes are bad, but we're going in. You are not Listen, being... you come to my channel because I am like, I'm like, I put on a suit, like a, like a, like an Among Us suit, and I dive into the cringe and I dive into the, into the bad vibes, and you are protected from them by the fact that I'm the one being subjected to them, but I have the strength to do it, so I can deliver it to you. I'm like. Hur! It's a triple feature. Here we go. Let's finish this video. If we don't finish this video, we're never going to get to the next one. Let's do it. Sexually fulfilled at all. Again, it's not okay. And men and women who are feeling that way need to learn to speak up. And they, you know, unfortunately, if the situation doesn't change, you're not in the right for then choosing to cheat, right? <laughs> like you have to be Among a big us. boy or a big girl and say, okay, I'm done. Clearly you don't respect me enough to acknowledge I have my that cringe this is vaccine. unfulfilling I've had it for me and I'm not as happy as I could be. And this is causing me a lot of problems. You know, if someone doesn't acknowledge that or doesn't care, then they don't respect you. And you, Thanks, you are very and welcome for buddy. You are very welcome, Vor Buddy. There will always be massive gay energy here, okay? You shouldn't be with that person. But again, that's that's really hard, especially when you've lived a life with this person. You have a house you've lived in for who knows how long. You have children. You have grandchildren. You love this person. That's hard. I guess my ultimate point is that, you know, it's easy, I think, to feel sad for someone who's cheated on. But I think often we should also feel sad for the person who has cheated it's probably her teeth are nice probably rarely a i'm case sorry of just a raging psychopath who doesn't give a shit this attitude just reinforces the idea that it's normal and acceptable for men to cheat if they're not getting sex from their significant other i mean it is normal in that a lot of people do cheat but no it's not acceptable but i could see yeah i, agree. I can see General, how people 85, would Derek. take it that way again there's no reason or excuse to be deceitful or dishonest to someone I if you're in I know. an agreed monogamous relationship. Absolutely. Again, it's that terrible, person Red is Con. in the wrong, but I don't think they're morally. Uh, Comrade Anthony, unironically, um, the reason for that is because uh, the reason for that is because of Hollywood. I'm not kidding you. It's because in Hollywood, everyone has nice teeth and American movies are watched all over the world. That's why. But uh, Hollywood actors are rich. That's why. Bankrupt. I should have said that. <laughs> right? We can view an action as wrong, but understand where that person is coming from and not hate them for it. It's like how we're starting to view we don't addicts, yet. right? We can be very frustrated I want to get with one, the way addicts often treat oh, even the people you're they right, love Red most, Con. It's but actually also true. understand why they're doing it and still try to be as compassionate we as possible. We all need free teeth, I agree. What happened to communication? If your needs aren't being met, maybe try talking to your partner. I don't expect a man to grin and bear it. I expect him to make his yep. needs known like an adult instead of cheating. And if those needs aren't met to leave the relationship. Absolutely. But again, I mean, does anyone really expect the average woman to go, oh yeah, sure, go, go ahead, go have sex with someone else, sure. No, of course not. Even if they're being safe, even if they're getting tested, both partners every time before, of course not. And maybe that's an aspect of our culture that needs to change. Or we can start trying to make Viagra for ladies. I don't know. Maybe that's an option. She just debunked herself, yeah. There are asexual people. There are people who... I'm sorry. Wait, wait which might be better since sex seems to play a large role in how we feel about our partners. Well, yeah, to a certain degree. Okay. Okay. I'm, there I'm are lost asexual on people. There are people who don't care about sex that much in this situation it would be better to break off the relationship. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah, if you but that's married kind of someone who's asexual and then you're expecting sex from them, what, 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 why? Now, if someone was sexual and, and yeah, Viagra does work for ladies. I don't know if people know this, but Viagra does work for ladies. Do people know, like, I don't know. Like, Viagra isn't, like, magic. Like, it's a pill that, that causes, that causes, it just increases blood flow. Well, it doesn't, yeah, it, it increases blood flow to specific areas in your body, which causes arousal. Yeah. And then they got on some you can medication take it as a woman. or an illness or something like that. Again, that doesn't remove your own personal need. Again, cheating is wrong, but yep. certainly have a conversation with them. Like, hey, I, I still I still need to touch vaginas or, or penises or whatever. Like, I know you don't want me to touch yours and that's okay. But like, I, I 
I still need this. Help me figure this out. What can we do? Orgasm, sexual pleasure, or cis women, yeah, cis women can take it. Yep. Needs to most, not In necessarily. Fact, sex. They do sometimes. One hundred percent disagree with that. If, if you think that that oh, penis, it's been silly, and we ended up talking about unrelated things because this is really stupid. Masturbating and just having an orgasm is the same as having physical intimacy with someone. No, for most people, absolutely not. LMFA, are you hacked or is this a real take? It's real, baby. Well, that's the end of my sub, I guess. You know, that's fine. Yeah, I, I have a big tooth. Uh, maybe more nuanced because, you know, I'm just so intellectual. I have a maybe more nuanced take on that. There are some things that people do where I'm just like, no, that's it. You know, there's some accounts I followed and for whatever reason, things I liked that they said and then they end up posting a lot of like, Here's a steak I had. Here's a, like, no, I'm not, you know, I don't think they're an She's awful a huge person or anything, but like, Violet. that's, that's my line. And for some of us, you know, in some cases, it's just like, if someone says anything you don't like, you end up, you end up, you know, unsubscribing, which is. Okay. Pretty... Okay. Okay. All right. I've had enough of this. Let's find the poly take. I've had enough of this. Let's find the, the poly take. Let's find hey the guys, poly take. So we're going to see. To say this is my opinion and you can't criticize it because it's my opinion, but then I'm going to criticize you for your opinion because you don't have any evidence for it. <laughs> Quite a few of you wanted me to talk about Monogamy is Sexy by Hannah McNeely. Hannah McNeely is vegan. She's been vegan for a long time. I All right, think. we'll do 1.5 She's Ellen speed. Fisher's sister. Yeah, very intriguing title. There's also, I, I'm assuming it's a follow-up video. I don't know, but not the next one, but the one after that, when you disagree with me. I'm assuming that is a response to the Monogamy is Sexy one, just based on the first, I think I watched maybe the first minute or so on the video, just based on that. I don't know what the rest, what else is in there. So again, I watched the first little bit and thought, yeah, okay, maybe I'll just talk about this because it's more, I guess, personal stuff anyway. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting because I'm not someone who's like personal personally a super fan of polyamory or open relationships or, or whatever you want to call it. I am someone who's monogamous and have no intention of, uh, Oh boy, here we go. Changing that. <laughs> it's just, you know, polyamory is not personally appealing to me. What's the, you know, joke. I can barely manage one relationship. How could I possibly, you know, manage more, even just one more, but like three more, four more. I don't know. You know, however many is the, the average number. Like it's, it's a joke, but it's like, seriously, I'm, I'm already terrible at just having yeah, one I partner. So, I can't yeah. imagine having more than one. That said, I am not like anti polyamory for other people. I think it can be a really positive thing. And uh, I don't, I don't think Hannah would agree with that. Anyway, let's watch the video. I will say though, that I see more discussion about open relationships and polyamorous relationships vibrating throughout social media spaces a lot more than the beauty of monogamous relationships, which is likely due to the fact that there's this belief that monogamy is this institution that we have to fight against and question. If you're on Twitter or something, what you're talking about, probably a lot of people who are more left-leaning and they, they may believe that, but like most people get married. I don't think most people are like, this is an institution we need to fight. Um, maybe if you survey younger people, maybe it's leaning more that way. I don't know, to me that sounds like Christians being like, we're a marginalized group. No, no you're not. I believe one might consider themselves an enlightened or evolved being for coming up with the innovative idea of going to bed with other people. I think that's where I went, oh, okay, this is, is this the video? Oh no. That's just very dismissive right off the bat of why people would be polyamorous and. Okay. All right, let's see, let's see. Hold on, let's see. Let's jump ahead and let's see. Here, let's see. Let's see. I mean, what monogamous couples can learn from polyamorous relationships, according to experts. This is from Time, uh, 2018. Tim Communication, Pullen, a May 2017 study noted that people in consensual, non-monogamous relationships communicate to, quote, negotiate agreements, schedules, and boundaries, and to work through the kinds of problems that emerge when negotiating polyamory amongst the typical relational problems that can emerge in any relationships. Defining the relationship, polyamorous partners often define boundaries and form agreements about what each relationship should look like. You can have multiple partners you want to see a lot. You have to negotiate time and space to do that. Practicing safe sex, a 2012 study found that individuals in polyamorous relationships were more likely to practice safe sex than those who cheat in monogamous okay that's pretty true though that's that's fucking true though that's a truer that's a truer p and the v is we can go happy people cheat too poly people aren't willing to do the hard work this just seems like a, i don't know actually i'm honestly maybe her takes are okay on this one relationships the study showed that monogamous individuals often consider monogamy a safe sex practice in and of itself so quote sexually unfaithful individuals may reject safer sex strategies because <laughs> of the presence true, of a stable though. relationship that. yikes Consensually non-monogamous couples often make explicit agreements with partners to use condoms and get information about SDI history with each new partner. Managing jealousy, you might think that having multiple remaining partners would elicit more jealousy, but according to a 2017 study, that's not necessarily the case. The study All right, was... fair enough. These are fair, these are fair. This is fair, fair. All right, all right, vegan lady. All right, I can't watch your whole 42 minute video, but fair enough. Do vegans need to talk about 
Black Lives Matter. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh-oh. Okay, I think we've had enough of vegan lady, okay? I think we've had enough. I think we've had enough of vegan lady, okay? Listen. I think we've had enough, okay? Have we had enough of vegan lady?